Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So as you guys know, the stock market continues to be incredibly volatile throughout this entire crash. And look, I have no idea where the bottom is. I don't pretend to know, um, but I would assume that things are gonna continue getting worse as that whole kind of global issue spreads and the global economy remains shut down. Having said that, I am a long-term investor who likes to do the majority of his buying when stocks are going down. So I do plan on continuing to nibble on some stocks uh, as we make our way throughout this crash. And as I've mentioned in several of my recent videos, my focus has been shifting a little more so towards some big dividend players uh, because as prices are going down, yields are getting to some pretty attractive uh, levels. So in today's video, I wanna go over three things with you guys. So the first thing I wanna talk about five stocks that I'm currently nibbling on, all of which pay uh, dividends. Uh, the second thing is I wanna quickly update you guys on my four largest stocks that really control my portfolio and let you know if I'm thinking about adding any more to those positions. And then the third thing I wanna cover is uh, a few extra stocks, three extra stocks that are, are very high up on my watch list, uh, but I would like them to come down a little bit before I start buying those, but I wanna also just kinda let you know what those are as well. But with all that said, we got a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and start by taking a look at those five dividend stocks that I'm currently nibbling on. And by the way, if you enjoy the video, please consider hitting the like button. It really helps support the channel, helps it survive and grow, and it means a lot to me. But let's go ahead and start with those stocks and we'll kinda go from there. Okay, so first up on the list is not so much of a dividend stock for me, although they do pay one, but it's the stock that I've been buying the most throughout this crash, so I do need to just kind of quickly cover it, and that's of course Visa, ticker symbol is V, and there's several reasons for me buying it, including market dominance with a gigantic network of digital payments processing, whether that's through credit and debit cards, both of which they control the most market share at over 50% and 70% respectively, or through some of their newer digital offerings like Visa Direct, but also because Visa isn't a lender like a traditional bank that has to worry about people defaulting on their loans during difficult economic times like recessions, which we're probably going through a global one as we speak, uh, or the effects of a low interest environment, which we're also currently in. Instead, Visa only facilitates the payments that are made every day and collects a fee from each transaction. And believe it or not, people will still spend money even during recessions, albeit at a much lower amount, but it should still be enough to sustain Visa throughout the rest of this year. And then when the economy starts coming back up, Visa will still be there ready to collect fees on all of the money that people start to spend again. Now the stock popped today by over 11%. I'm recording this on Tuesday, and we just had the biggest one day gain in the Dow Jones in the history of the stock market, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because I like prices to be going down. I don't really want them to be going up. But uh, even at these higher levels, it's still down around 30% uh, from their highs. And as you can see on this 10 year chart, the stock rarely ever dips thanks to excellent management and very solid financial growth over the years on both the top and bottom line. Like I said, they do pay a dividend, but it's a very tiny one that doesn't really play like any major role in my decision to invest in them. However, with the stock price falling, the yield is getting closer to 1%, and with a very low payout ratio and very high growth rate of over 20%, that dividend may actually turn into a nice little bonus for me as I work uh, to turn Visa into a larger core holding in my portfolio for the long term. And by the way, the last time I added Visa shares was in the $130 range, so I really hope that they do go back to those lower levels because I think those prices were a steal in my opinion. Okay, now we're gonna start seeing some more attractive dividends and starting with stock number two, that's gonna be a brand new stock that I just recently added. In fact, it's currently the newest addition to my portfolio and that is PepsiCo, ticker symbol is PEP. And this is one that I'd love to buy more of if they continue falling, but currently they're down over 25% from their highs. And while I do think that they are a fairly solid company, just in the fact that they sell so many consumer staple kind of grocery brands like Pepsi, Aquafina, Mountain Dew, and Gatorade, not to mention some high growth brands like Bubbly, Sparkling Water, and Naked Juice, along with solid food snacks, uh, brands like Doritos, Lay's, and Cheetos, and even a partnership with Starbucks, all of which I think will help them stay alive during this global recession since so many people are going crazy buying 
everything in the grocery stores, but it's also helped lift the stock as their financials have remained very solid over the years, doing close to $70 billion in sales last year alone. But the real reason I bought PepsiCo is for the monstrous dividend. And I say monstrous not for the yield, although it is very attractive at over 3.6%, but I say it more so for the dividend growth history that sits at nearly 50 years of consecutive growth, which will soon classify them as a dividend king. In my opinion, this does make them a pretty reliable dividend that I can count on into the future. So unless something dramatically changes with their business, they will likely be a very long-term play for me and for the cash flow generating kind of dividend part of my portfolio. Okay, next up is another dividend stock with an even bigger growth history than PepsiCo, which is abs you know obviously saying a lot, and that is 3M, ticker symbol is MMM. And this is a stock that just hasn't been able to catch a break ever since the start of 2018 when they were trading for around $260 a share, but they've now fallen by over 50% since then, which is a massive crash for them. And I gotta tell you, the more that it falls, the more that they've caught my attention. And that's because this is a dividend stock that is now yielding about 5%. And by the way, it actually has yielded over 5% when the stock was a little lower, but after today's rally, it's at about a 5% yield, which is still very high for them. I don't think I remember ever seeing them yield this high of an amount since I started tracking them. But the real story here is that gigantic massive growth history of over 60 years, which is incredible. And yet they still have a reasonable payout ratio and a double digit growth rate over the past five years. Now I totally understand the skepticism over this stock. A lot of people hate it because the performance hasn't been that great recently as they miss their growth targets in three of the last five years, including last year where sales tanked by negative 2%. But here's the thing guys, 3M isn't going anywhere. A slowdown in growth, mostly because of macroeconomic issues, isn't a big enough reason to think that this company is uninvestable. In fact, thanks to selling so many masks that are in you know very high demand right now, obviously, Wall Street is actually expecting positive sales growth this year, despite everyone talking about this being one of the worst recessions in history. And you can't forget, this is a company that is extremely exposed to the macro economy because of their wide range of products across various industries. But the way I see it, 3M has so many stable products and brands that help them generate billions in free cash flow that I just don't see that dividend growth being halted anytime soon, let alone actually being cut. So while the stock price is low and the dividend yield is high, this is a stock that I'm interested in for my long-term dividend portfolio. Definitely has its risk as I've discussed in previous videos, but for me personally, I just feel that the risk is mostly worth it, again, just for me. Okay, now as if 3M's dividend yield wasn't attractive enough at about 5%, the next two stocks that I'm investing in right now both have mouth-watering yields of over 7% each. And the first one of those is AT&T, ticker symbol is T. Now the stock recently tanked some more for a couple of reasons. One is that they canceled their stock buyback program because of that global issue. And they basically said that it's because they don't know how a recession will affect the demand for their products and services. And to me, that actually makes total sense. This is clearly going to be a very rough year. So why not just wait a little, save that money in case you need it, finish building out the 5G network and the HBO Max streaming service that you desperately need to help offset some of the bleeding from the huge losses in video subscribers as people continue cutting the cord. And then when the economy turns around and hopefully the cash flows get strong again, then you can go back in and buy back stock and pay down debt, which by the way, they really need to pay down that debt because in my opinion, AT&T has one of the absolute ugliest looking balance sheets out there with almost $150 billion of long-term debt, which makes this stock a lot more risky than it otherwise would be and does go against some of my investing principles, which is to uh, have you know a decent balance sheet. But the other reason why the stock tanked even more recently is because of a pair of downgrades from analysts that have similar concerns and worry that a recession could lead to less advertising money for them and that they prefer more simplistic, less diversified companies like Verizon that don't have so much content and media exposure during the whole cord cutting movement. And I gotta be honest, it's pretty scary looking at all the analyst downgrades on this one. I think the combination of high debts and the fact that they're still heavily tied to their legacy cable TV services and brands has kept me from going in too heavy 
into this stock. But at the same time, I'm just addicted to their dividend and I feel that this stock is also very cheap that I just can't help buying it. And maybe it's a value trap, I guess we'll find out over time. But as of right now, the stock is down about 30% from its 52 week high and is also trading for about the lowest price throughout an entire decade. Just yesterday, I was able to buy some shares at only around $26 a share. To give you an idea of how cheap that is, even after today's climb, their forward P ratio is only 7.43 according to Guru Focus. That's close to 50% cheaper than the sector median for a company that has the most wireless subscription market share in the United States. And you know, it's something to think about. And the result of the stock crashing by so much is that the dividend yield has now soared to almost 8%. That's Pretty damn attractive for a dividend that has also been increased for 35 years in a row. But hey, stock keeps falling, I say let it fall. I would love nothing more than to get an 8% plus dividend on my money. And hopefully this works out for me in the long run, but I'll keep you guys updated on any company specific changes and make sure you, you remind me if I forget. Okay, now the other high yielder that I've been nibbling on is ABV, ticker symbol is ABBV. And as you guys know from my previous videos, this is a biopharmaceutical that is currently down close to 50% from their highs in early 2018. And it's mostly been falling because of the loss of patent protection of their Humira drug in Europe and impending loss of patent protection in the US in a few years from now. But I really feel that they've done a decent job of lowering their dependence on it by launching new blockbuster potential drugs like Rinvoc and Skyrezi, among others in the pipeline, along with a giant acquisition of Allergan that should help their already massive cash flow stay strong for the time being. By the way, their free cash flow is about a third of their revenues. That's incredibly high. And of course, that allows them to pay one heck of a dividend that yields over 7% and carries an insanely high growth rate for its size at over 20%. Plus, they've grown that dividend for decades if you include the payments before their spinoff from Abal Laboratories, which technically makes them a dividend aristocrat. Couple that with a 4P ratio that is way lower than the sector, and a business that is at least somewhat recession-proof in the sense that anyone who uses their drugs will likely keep needing them, although I guess people might not be buying Allergan's Botox products if they're low on cash, but add it all up and I think it's a pretty decent dividend stock. I won't be buying too much because I hate investing in, pharmaceutical, in the pharmaceutical industry since I really struggle to understand it, but if it keeps falling like this, that dividend is just too hard for me to resist. Okay, so those are some of the stocks that I've currently been nibbling on. Now I just wanna to quickly touch on my four largest stocks that really control the majority of my portfolio. And those are number one, Microsoft, number two, Amazon, number three, Tesla, and number four, Disney. And really apart from Disney, the other three stocks just haven't really come down as much as I would like them to for me to feel excited to add to my positions. And that's because I already have such large positions built out. And again, apart from Disney, I'm actually up a lot on all of those stocks, uh, even throughout, even with this crash that we've been going through. But then again, that's not really a good enough reason to not be buying those stocks. So if they do fall a little bit more, I may actually be adding to my positions, even though they're already very large, uh, because there are some solid companies and I may even do so using some fractional shares as well. In fact, I actually bought some Amazon recently when it very briefly hit the $1,600 range, but it's already rebounded to almost $2,000. So it's just not that exciting for me anymore since my cost basis is about half of that. And when you look at the five-year chart, it just hasn't really dropped a lot. In fact, the correction at the end of 2018 was a much bigger drop by comparison. Of course, there's a good reason for that since so many people are shopping online right now that is leading to an increase in demand, which is resulting in them hiring another 100,000 employees at a time when most other companies are busy laying people off. So when it's all said and done, Amazon may not see a huge impact on their business from all of this, but if it comes back down to those kind of $1,600 levels or lower, I probably will be buying more and uh, probably with fractional shares. Uh, by the way, speaking of jobs, I believe the jobless claims report is coming this week and it's expected to be a really nasty one. So I'm curious to see how the stock market will react if it's not already priced in. But let me know if you guys would like to see an update video on that when it happens. 
Anyway, looking at those other stocks, my number one largest stock is, of course, Microsoft. And that one was finally starting to look attractive yesterday, but then they surged by almost 10% today. And since my cost basis is still around $100, I would like to get it a little lower if possible. But Microsoft is really one of those uh, really large, really stable companies out there that I just really can't envision myself regretting picking up more shares of. So if it does drop a little more, you know, I may consider picking up some shares and adding to my position, even though it's already such a large one. Now, Tesla, my third largest stock, was also looking attractive, almost hitting the $300 range, which I was getting excited about, but then it popped by 16% today, and now I just find myself like not feeling as excited since my cost basis is closer to $200. But like I said before in other videos, Tesla has huge growth potential over the long term, and with everything going on this year, I think we'll continue to see some great prices for Tesla if you're thinking long term. And then finally, unlike Microsoft or Amazon who have performed pretty well during this crash, uh, Disney has been a very different story, getting absolutely destroyed over the past month. At one point, even seeing their market cap drop below that of Netflix, which you can see on this chart here that shows the uh, stability of Netflix and the huge crash of Disney. That's kind of crazy because you know Disney is much more than just a streaming service, which is uh, basically all that Netflix does. And while they did have a big rebound today, we're talking about uh, Disney here, surging by over 13%, they're still down by close to 40% from their highs. I did buy some shares yesterday in the low 80s, but we'll have to see if it drops back down to those levels again. But Disney is really a really interesting stock at the moment because they're clearly going to have an incredibly bad year with theme parks, resorts, and also movie theaters being shut down. But at the same time, Disney Plus is probably seeing a big surge in subscribers for people staying at home. And while that's obviously not enough to offset the other negatives, the long-term picture for Disney, in my opinion, is still pretty bright. So we'll have to see what Wall Street pays more attention to in terms of the short-term struggles or the long-term value. But I'll, keep, I'll be keeping a close eye on this one and possibly even adding to my position at certain points if it keeps falling. And then just to wrap everything up here, I just wanna quickly mention a few more stocks that are very high up on my watch list. I've been keeping a very close eye on them because uh, as I've told you guys in previous videos, I have also been shifting my focus over to some more reliable, very solid companies that I'm hoping will get dragged down lower by the broader market. And those would be Google, which is an insanely dominant company that I've always wanted to own again, and they don't normally dip a lot, but if they fall below a thousand, I may think about buying in, possibly using fractional shares. And then there's Facebook, which is another stock that I used to own, and I would love to buy it again, since they usually have a reasonable valuation, good growth, and a very solid balance sheet, just like Google. So I have them very high up on my watch list right now as well. And then finally, Nvidia is another stock that uh, this, well, this one's actually a stock that I already own myself, but I think they have a lot of future growth potential. So if they get down to around $200 or less, I'd be very interested in buying more of that stock. And 200 is, is kind of an arbitrary level to be honest, but I like it because that's where my average cost basis is. So anywhere kind of under 200 where my uh, average cost is, uh, I would love to add more shares around those levels or even lower if possible. But so far they haven't really dropped a lot and today they jumped by close to 20%. So I'm hoping it comes back down before all of this is kind of said and done. Okay, so I think that just about does it for today's video. What did you think about all of these stocks? Are there any on the list that you happen to own yourself or that you're thinking about picking up? Let me know down in the comments section below. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you hit the like button. It really helps the channel and it means a lot to me. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay safe out there. I'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.